right, so for this section, we're gonna be creating the floating rock structure that actually holds the castle. And we're not gonna be creating the like fully final detailed version of this rock structure, but we're gonna to try to get this to a point where it's good enough to move on. And once we get into the detailing stage, that's when we're gonna make it like more clean, add a bunch of detail and all of that. For this, I'm really just focusing on getting the shape, the initial detail, and just making it look at least like a basic cliff. So I'm starting out with a plane right now, and I'm gonna start extruding this down and just scaling down each extrusion to kind of match the pointed shape that I see in my head. And I'm just trying to find the initial scale that I want. And I'm just zooming out the camera as well so that I can actually see more of what I'm doing since that was actually starting to leave the frame. And I'm about to go into sculpt mode with the crab brush so that I can just kind of like start tugging things around. And this just kind of helps give you a more natural organic shape to it. So I'm just kind of using the grab brush as well as going back into edit mode and just kind of scaling things manually. And I'm just about to start remeshing this too. So using the remesh modifier inside of Blender, I'm just basically just remeshing it, adding new subdivisions in there so I can actually start sculpting with dynamic topology. And I'm just smoothing out the edges to make it look kind of just, you know, less jagged. And then once I smoothen out all of these edges, I'm going to start actually kind of like chiseling this down with the clay strips brush. And the clay strips brush is pretty much my go-to brush for almost every single thing that I'm sculpting. It's really nice for pretty much most environment work. And I usually will use something between 0 0.2, 0 0.25. And I'm just kind of like holding control, softening some of the edges, and then just sculpting on top of that a bit more. Um, around the top, I'm kind of doing these long strips to kind of just build out the terrain a little bit more and kind of build like some sort of platform. And I'm just kind of like going back down underneath this, kind of chiseling parts where I need to kind of shape inwards and then just adding more to kind of, you know, make it look a bit more natural on the other sides. So I'm not really trying to make it look perfect because I'm going to also start placing some kind of Quixel Megascan cliffs on top of this to actually add the like the real cliff detail. For this, I'm really just focusing on the initial shape just so I kind of know what size I need for this and like the placement to kind of build the cliffs around. I will be scattering trees on the top platform part where I'm actually sculpting right now, but that's pretty much all that you're actually going to see of this sculpted cliff terrain. Yeah, so now I'm just going through my materials right now. I just have a bunch of Polyhaven materials, so if you've never used polyhaven.com, they just got a bunch of free materials. So there's this cliff material that I decided on, and then I'm also about to grab a grass material as well. So I'm going to actually mix these materials together because what I want to do is actually separate these materials based on the slope. So on the top section, I'm going to be showing the grass or like the flat faces basically. And then on the sides and bottom faces, I'm gonna be showing the cliff rock. So I'm using a mix shader right now so I can mix the two materials together. And before I do anything else, I'm just adjusting the scale and then also the color of the grass. So I'm using a hue and saturation to brighten it up with the value and add some more saturation as well. So in the factor, I'm adding a bump node because as you can see, there's three different colors, red, blue, and green. I want to separate this with a separate color and choose the blue value, which is the Z axis faces. So up and down, and I'm using this as a mask and the color ramp is used as a fall off too. So you can adjust like the fall off with the color ramp, as you can see. And now I have grass on the top section and then cliff on the sides and the bottom. So you can use this workflow for anything as well. So I use this for like snow. So if I want like snow on the tops of my objects, then I'll do it that way. Or I guess frost, you can do this with like moss or really anything in general. It's really quick and easy and it works really fast. Like it, it doesn't slow down your system at all just because you're literally just masking basic color on the material. So yeah, right here, I'm just kind of doing some final tweaks on the sculpt. And then I'm about to go in and start kind of placing some cliff rocks around. So this cliff asset is one of the cliff assets from Quixel Megascans. Um, same with all the other assets that I'm gonna be using for this cliff rock. So this one's one of my favorite ones to use in a lot of cases. So I decided to bring this in and I'm deleting some of the bottom faces just so there's not kind of like that flat section that kind of peeks out super far. That's just gonna make it a little bit easier to merge everything together without that weird overlap. And I'm building some sort of platform because I figured it'd be kind of cool to have some platforms on the sides. So I just made these flat sections and then I'm just kind of building the transition points by just rotating this cliff around and trying to kind of round it out and kind of match back up to the base sculpt basically. So it's a little bit repetitive right now, as you can see, because we're using the same rock structure for the most part. And you can kind of see some repeating patterns, but I'm not too worried about that because once I get in the detailing stage later on in the project, I can either swap out some rocks, I can add some new rocks, or I can also cover up sections with vegetation and, you know, just get rid of some of that repetition. So I'm really only focusing on the basic shape of the entire structure and then just also adding some like actual rock detail to it. As you can see too, I'm in sculpt mode, adjusting kind of like the, uh, like the shape of 
my rock structures just to kind of merge things into place. So again, I recommend whenever you like need to kind of organically move things around or shape things, use the grab brush. The grab brush is really easy to do this. Like you can just tug things with like a very big grab brush and it looks pretty organic if you don't overdo it. So I'm just kind of doing this with almost every single asset, just kind of moving it into place. It is close enough at the beginning, but not quite exactly shaped how I need it to. So I just kind of nudge things around until it's kind of sharp enough or like rounded enough and kind of fitting every area that I need. So basically this is the last section of the cliff rocks. I'm just kind of getting the final details, kind of adding some like more pointed rocks on the sides, as you can see. And then these last ones are just kind of the same rock, just duplicated on the top section, just to kind of cover up that flat rock detail from the base sculpt structure. So yeah, right now I'm just kind of sculpting this rock in and kind of making it a little bit more stretched out and pointy on the side and then duplicating it on those last two parts. All right, so that is all for this section, creating the floating rock. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to NVIDIA Studio's YouTube channel and stay tuned for the next videos, which in this series, the next video is going to be sculpting out the landscape. So basically how I go about creating the environment around this focal point. So sculpting out the foreground, the background environment, and creating some like mountains and so on. So I'll see you guys then.